Yes, oh, yes. Yeah. So, welcome everyone. Uh, welcome to my talk about um, building voice first uh, Flutter apps. It's my clicker. So, I'm Elaine. I work at Sphere, which is a French uh, agency. I work mostly with mobile apps, I'm a mobile specialist. I've been working, of course, a lot of, uh, with Flutter on the, on the side, but uh, I've been working with uh, some projects also uh, around Flutter with my company, which is great. And then, uh, so this is what outlined so, uh, for the building voice first Flutter apps. First of all, I would like to tell you why you should care about that, why uh, you should uh, think about uh, voice interactions on a mobile app, how you do it. Then, of course, uh, a mobile, especially for voice, you have to, as the, the speaker just before, uh, Dominique was saying, in order to um, integrate with um, with the native, native, uh, uh, the native platforms, you have to understand how those things work and the APIs that are available and how they work. So I'm going to be talking about some generalities on uh, voice on Android and iOS, the voice assistants that are available for Google Assistant and Siri, and then uh, what, is, uh, what is available with Flutter, the Flutter plugins that already exist. Um, I will be doing a demo, some, and then some final thoughts. So first of all, why? I'll give you three uh, reasons why you should care about voice interactions on an app. The first one is hands reaction. Sometimes you're driving or you're cooking or some other use cases. It's really useful to have uh, some kind of hands reaction when maybe you have a broken wrist too. And uh, so first use case, yes. Second one, it's for people with disabilities. Maybe some visual impairments, people that have uh, dexterity problems that, that cannot use a screen as you and I uh, can use, or maybe even some uh, cognitive uh, problems. So um, voice is, especially when the voice is made in a natural way, when we allow the users to express themselves in um, the way they want, is the most powerful and the most easy user interface that you can think about, of course, when it's done right. And so for those, this people, for those kind of people, it's really useful to have uh, some kind of voice interaction on an app. The third reason, I'll, I'll let you uh, read the, this tweet for 10 seconds. Okay, people start laughing, so you have, <laughs> you, you finished it. Uh, it's the new generations, right? The new generations are just going to expect to be able to talk with everything that's surrounding them and to have an answer. So it's going to be just natural for them to be interacting by voice with uh, any object. So what do you need to do as a developer? There are four things that you have to integrate. The first thing, so this is the, a diagram that shows a system that is uh, completely voice forward. So the first thing that the user is going to do some kind of command, so you have to actually uh, detect that the user wants to start the command, the OKG, the Alexa, the Hey Siri, the things like that. So this is the wake word detection. And then you start listening for the actual command. Uh, this command in the best way is going to be a complex command because people uh, express themselves in different ways. So uh, this, the, the, only, the only thing that you're going to be on the STT, on the speech-to-text part, is, is that you're going to translate whatever he's saying uh, by voice, the audio, to text. And then, as I said, people are going to express themselves naturally, so you have to actually detect what they, they mean, what they want to do. If uh, uh, I'm, I'm uh, Domino's Pizza or something like that, my, my uh, app, it's for delivering pizza, for, for, for ordering pizza. And maybe the, the person says, I want to have some pizza. The other say, I'm hungry, I really like some pizza. So the phrases are not the same, but we have to detect that the intent, the thing that he wants is to buy something and, the th the, and what it is, is pizza. And then maybe some other parameters and stuff like that. And in order to, to really uh, be able to detect those kind of parameters, you use some kind of machine learning. This is NLP, Natural Language Processing. processing sorry, that is going to transform the string to intents, to entities, to parameters, things that we can use as developers. Then, these uh, kind of things you can use as a developer on your app that is going to do some business logic, some web service calls, some simple stuff, some database calls, whatever you want. And, of course, it's going to uh, build the answer back to the user that, again, on a, on a um, voice-first app is going to be said out loud, so through audio, so this you have uh, to uh, give back the audio to the, to the user through the text-to-speech TTS part. 
So this is a most important diagram of, of, the, uh, of the presentation. I'm going to be uh, going back to this one a lot of times. So how you do it? Um, of course, you can. Uh, this is about uh, integrating on uh, existing app that you already have, but there are platforms that already exist, right? So maybe you can integrate on the platforms, can integrate, of course, on an app. And uh, for some parts, especially for the machine learning part or for the audio processing and stuff like that, you may also uh, want to do some uh, in-house development if you really want to, some really low-level stuff. Uh, but this talk is not about that, it's about integrating with things that are, are already there or um, integrating with uh, platforms that already exist. So the platforms that exist, so you have of course uh, voice platforms like Google Assistant, Alexa, Siri is not on that list for a reason, I'm going to talk about that later. And um, again, I'm talking about voice first apps but we can also talk about conversational apps and uh, so chat apps that uh, have some kind of uh, uh, common points also with this kind of app. So there are uh, platforms such as Facebook Messenger, Telegram, Slack and others that have really good uh, developer um, uh, tools to integrate with them. And then in, uh, in order to integrate into an existing app, this is, I think it's really interesting for us that build apps, or mobile apps, uh, that have um, put a lot of um, effort and a lot of money to to have a lot of maybe that have a, a, already a lot of users, millions, ten, tens of millions of, uh, of users. Uh, it only makes sense to integrate on uh, on an existing app. So in Flutter, either using the existing package, uh, an existing plugin, or integrating with. Um, SDK that is targeted to mobile platforms by using method channels, we're going to see that. And again, in-house development, if you want to do low-level stuff, um, maybe some machine learning and stuff like that, but again, I'm not going to talk about that. So let's see some generalities about um, Android, the voice on Android. Um, so this is a timeline of uh, APIs or an Android and Google uh, solutions that have been developed along the years that are voice forward. And the thing that I want you to notice here is that the text-to-speech and the speech recognizer APIs were uh, available since like basically ever and it's really interesting and also that on the very last years we have seen a lot of uh, efforts on machine learning. And of course, you can see uh, the Google Assistant that it was launched in 2016. And of course, the, the father of Google Assistant, Google Now, 2018, uh, 12, sorry. Um, so if you go back to the diagram, you can see that for uh, each block, you can actually apply stuff that already exists on Android to use, um, uh, to apply to, to an app. So, for example, uh, by the speech recognizer, speech recognizer framework for speech to text, uh, the text to speech uh, API for text to speech. For uh, the NLP part, there is no uh, native uh, APIs, but there is Dialogflow, which is not only for Android, it's cross platform, but it's uh, from Google, so it's kind of for uh, Android too. And uh, for the wake word detection, you have something that is on uh, the system voice actions. So, si system voice actions actually allow the users either to the search or Google Assistant now, Google, Google uh, now back then, to do some kind of uh, actions uh, that will deep link the user directly to uh, some, some place on the app. And you can see there is very, they are kind of limited. There are not a, a lot of um, actions right here, but you have the one that's open name of the application that works really well. If you open the Google Assistant or if you use Google search and you say open name of the app, it would work right, right out of the box. So this is really great to launch apps uh, through voice. So when talking about the voice, of course, on Android, we think about the Google Assistant, the assistant, the, the voice assistant that it's uh, made by Google. Uh, there is uh, an integration for uh, um, Android apps. It's called App Actions. So this is basically you are delegating everything to the Google Assistant, so you don't have to care about uh, all those APIs, integrations, etc. The Google Assistant is going to take care of everything for you and your app, everything that you have to do here is that you have to integrate this, um, this file, the actions.xml file, that will uh, declare uh, what your app can do 
And basically, the Google Assistant is going to look on that file and say, OK, the, 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 the user through the Google Assistant asks for X. And I see that this app does X. So I'm going to uh, launch the app uh, right there. So uh, and, and if you have some kind of basic uh, deep linking on the app, it should work uh, just out of the box. Uh, so this is what the actions.xml file looks like. It's not very interesting. It's the XML file that is describing the actions that can be done on your app. Um, the limitation of the solution of app actions is that it's still on the developer preview, and they have very limited use cases for ride sharing, for fitness, for finance, for uh, food ordering. Sorry. You can test it out as a developer. I'm going to, if I have the time, I'm going to show you uh, what uh, I did for the, the demo. But, and still in developer preview, hopefully it will be out soon. <laughs> and uh, they did not talk about when they do demos about app actions, that there, there is one really useful uh, app actions, which is actually opening an app feature. So basically every developer can use it. It's uh, open app feature, so. Great, and this is actually the, what I, the, the one that I used on my app. There are also some kind of uh, basic um, communication that you can do between Google Assistant and Android, and uh, the Android app and Google Assistant, which basically relies on, on deep linking. It's kind of um, not hacking, but it's not optimal because I think the experience is not that great, but it's totally usable. You can see on the Animations here, I'm going from a Google action to, that directs the users to an Android app, and then uh, on the right, an Android app that opens the Google Assistant uh, action. So what about iOS? Again, this is the timeline for iOS. You can see that it's kind of different because the features were available. The one that, um, I'm sorry, the one that are on uh, regular text are features for iOS. The one that are on bold are actually developer tools, uh, either APIs or frameworks. You can see that Siri has been out forever, since 2011. But SiriKit, uh, the developer platform for Siri, has been uh, out only for a few years, so only for uh, since the 2016. Even the um, text-to-speech, which is the speech uh, AV uh, speech synthesizer, since 2013, and the speech framework from uh, 2016. But the, it's, they are out now uh, and they work great. So, but uh, this is what you have to know that everything is available uh, for us. And as Google, of course, we have seen a lot of uh, machine learning efforts uh, on the last years. Uh, and the difference too with, uh, with Android is that they actually have uh, something that can uh, process natural language embedded on iOS. So uh, you can do uh, the wake work detection, the spe uh, speech to text, the NLP, and TTS using only APIs um, uh, provided by iOS. And I'm not, I don't have the time to talk about all of those uh, APIs, but I really wanted to talk a little bit about Siri shortcuts because I think they are really good uh, solutions for developers. You can uh, basically integrate really well with Siri by uh, either performing actions on your app uh, inside of Siri, not even uh, you don't even have to open your app, but if you'd like, you can deep link the user to an app to a specific sc uh, screen and do some kind of action. Uh, you can integrate it by doing some stuff. You have to. Um, you can even uh, um, tell Siri what your user is doing in order to suggest actions to uh, your user. And you can also, for those uh, here who use iOS, uh, you have this uh, new feature since uh, iOS 12, I think, where you can add phrases in order to uh, perform an action directly inside of your app. I'm going to uh, be demoing that uh, later if you, don't, you did not understand. And it, what is really uh, powerful too is that your app is now uh, accessible from the Spotlight Search and Lock Screen, Siri Watch Faces, so this is really good. And of course from Siri. And what about integrated even deeper uh, with Siri? As uh, with uh, Google Assistant, you can uh, integrate with the Intents uh, extension, where you're going to be basically uh, delegating, as the app, with App Actions, delegating everything to, to Siri. So uh, all of the things are, are going to be uh, run in Siri, and you don't have to care about any of those. 
but in order to do so, you have to be on a disability is more sorry, but uh, you have to be on uh, on one of those categories right here. So I can talk about someone up because it's really uh, small. Messaging, photos, media, workouts, payments, and so on. But you can look at the documentation if you want, and I'm going to publish the slides to you if you want to check it out later. Uh, I want to take two seconds to talk a little bit uh, about the difference between also the Google, uh, the differences between Google Assistant and Siri. Uh, okay, there, there's the development platform, mobile integration uh, platform, and the hardware uh, development uh, platform. Uh, we don't care about the names, but what I want you to know about in here in this slide is that the Google Assistant is a platform by itself. Google Assistant is not Android. Google Assistant works on Android, but it was built to be working everywhere and also on iOS. There's an app that works on iOS. So it's really, it's not, it's not based on Android. It's not Android at all. Of course, there are, there's app actions, which, which is actually the glue between Google Assistant and, and, and um, Android. But Siri, Siri is not a, a voice platform. Siri is an extension of iOS. So Siri Kit, Siri Shortcuts, HomeKit, they, they rely on iOS. You have to have an app in order to, uh, to be working with Siri. If you want to integrate the Google Assistant, you don't need an Android app. So this is what, what I wanted to show you here. And but the, the so the downside is that you have you have to have an app. If you don't have a, an app, you you need to have one uh, to integrate with Siri. But the upside is that uh, the integration is really well because uh, the, uh, Siri is a part of iOS. So there's Apple, there's Google, okay, but there's a lot of other uh, people that are working on that uh, area. So uh, what about them? Um, Again, diagram uh, with the steps uh, for speech to text and text to speech. I think the, the first party APIs, they are great. They work really nicely. So I'm not be focus, focusing on them. I'm going to be focusing on the two other ones. So this, this is what is out there for the hot word detection and for the machine learning part, for the natural language part. There are a bunch of uh, solutions out there. Um, some work offline, online, some you can actually host on your servers if you'd like. Some are on Android only or uh, iOS only, but most of them are actually uh, cross-platform. I have tested most of them. You have to check them out if you want to uh, be uh, willing to, to use those kinds of integrations. And... The advantage to uh, use those kind of uh, solutions is that not only they work for mobile, but they are targeting other platforms too, just uh, desktop, Raspberry Pi, and even some voice platforms such as uh, Messenger, Slack, and etc. And especially for Flutter, since it targets a lot of uh, platforms, this can be really interesting. And again, those are other uh, solutions that target a lot of platforms. So finally, let's talk about Flutter. Oh, I'm doing good on time. That's nice. <laughs> uh, so, uh, so these were uh, generalities about the uh, the platforms, about Android and iOS, which is really important. I think you have to know uh, how those uh, native APIs work. What is out there on the Flutter side? There are uh, some uh, speech-to-text and text-to-speech uh, plugins that are out there. I have looked into detail to some of those. They are basically relying on the ones that I told you before, the, um, the first APIs are provided by Android and, uh, and iOS. So they basically only wrapping the, them uh, and exposing them through uh, method channels. And I've used the first ones, uh, the STT, uh, the speech to text and for the TTS, and they, they work pretty great for me. Oh, yes, and uh, there's one ex exception here. There's the Baidu speech recognition that I didn't know about, but someone made a package for it. Okay, that, it's fine. I didn't test it, but it's a nice, uh, nice solution there. Uh, for the machine learning, there's the Flutter dialog flow and um, Lex, which is actually the machine learning part for uh, Amazon that are out there. Uh, this one is not official, but uh, it's pretty popular. And the, the one for Amazon, it's really rough. It's really work in progress. I think they only have the speech part for now. They even don't have the machine learning part, but they, they say that they're working on it. 
And then they, you have uh, actually packages that say that they have integrations with voice platforms such as Alexa, Siri, Watson, which is the one from IBM. And another surprise for me, something that I didn't know, uh, Allen Voice, this, which is another um, uh, platform that I, I didn't know about. And just a mention to uh, the Google Cloud APIs because there are a bunch of uh, machine learning and uh, natural language understanding uh, tools that are out there on the cloud, so everything is processed on the cloud. And you have the plugin, the Google APIs uh, package, which is what I think it is uh, developed by Google. Uh, that integrates Dialogflow, so this one is official, made by Google. Cloud natural language, uh, cloud speech to text, and cloud text to speech. So nice to know that the, those uh, kind of plugins are out there. So you can see that you have a speech to text, text to speech, uh, um, NLP, but you don't. Yeah, I don't have the first uh, block that I showed you, which is the hot word detection. And if you go back to the solutions that I have uh, identified, actually the only ones that uh, are made available uh, officially and that work well uh, today with Flutter is only Dialogflow and IBM Watson. All the other ones are not uh, yet available as a Flutter plugin. So what do I do? Of course, you use uh, method channels. You integrate uh, those as the case yourself, and then you uh, communicate uh, with the app, uh, with the Flutter side, using method channels. So uh, I don't know uh, how, how well do you know method channels here, so I'll just take you one second to, uh, to explain really basic stuff about it. So it's, it's basically allowing uh, the Flutter uh, side of the app and the uh, platform side to communicate. Either Flutter sends a message to, uh, to the platform, or the platform sends a message to Flutter, and then you can communicate uh, easily between them. And it's really useful, of course, for integrating with uh, native code, with first-party uh, first APIs, such as speech-to-text, text-to-speech. This is what they have done on the, uh, on the packages that I have shown you before. Or if uh, the plugin doesn't exist yet, such as uh, the hot word plugins, you can integrate those on uh, the Android and iOS part of your project and then implement method channels in order to communicate with the Flutter part. So this is how it works. So you can see on code here, uh, this is the, an example of the F Flutter app as a client. So you can see right here on the example, it's the example on the documentation of Flutter. Um, the Flutter wants to print the battery level from, uh, from the app, so it's going to uh, create this method channel right here with some kind of name and invoke the method uh, get battery level. And then what's going to happen is that on the, uh, nat on the platform side, either Android or iOS, they have the same uh, method channel, but they are now listening to uh, the, the, the method that has been invoked through the set method call handler method. And then if the matter is get better level, you can see you have some very basic native code, so Android code here and some kind of iOS native code that is going to uh, give back the, uh, the actual battery level coming from the system. And then uh, through the result and uh, battery level, you give back this information to uh, the Flutter app. This is the most uh, common use case, but you can also uh, trigger events on the other uh, way. This is what I have actually done for the uh, hot word detection because the, um, it is actually the native part that is going to uh, trigger something because uh, if I have my hot word, it's, uh, no, it's called hot word. If I say hot word to my app, it is actually the Android part and the iOS part that is going to detect that. And I have to send this information back to the Flutter part. So this is what I'm doing right here. Uh, on the uh, Android side, you can see that uh, this is the keyword callback, so when the keyword is detected, so hot word detected, I am invoking a method that I am going to be doing something with on the Flutter side. Again, sa same thing for iOS. So this is really useful that you, you can do uh, this kind of communication uh, on both ways. So let's see a little demo. 
you can see, so I don't know if you recognize this uh, app for those who have participated on the Flutter Clock contest. This was actually the starter project of the app. When I was thinking about the demo, I thought, okay, uh, what I'm going to do, I need a really small project only to show some stuff. And I said, okay, the Flutter Clock uh, seem, seems really nice. I don't, how do I make it disappear? Okay. Um, so I, I didn't do basically any uh, UI uh, changes here. I only uh, integrated with, uh, I only tried to integrate the voice actions. So here I have, uh, <laughs> hopefully it's going to work. I have the hot word detection and the speech to text, and then it's going to perform something on the app. It's going to maybe change, I'm, I'm going now, I'm going to try to change the theme from dark to light. Let's see if it works. Hey, Pico. Okay, it crashed. <laughs> let's, just in case, let's start this again. It was running for too long, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> now it should work. So now I'm going to try to go from light to dark. Hey, Pico. Dark over. Oh, it worked. So you see that uh, what I did was, oh, yes. <laughs> Just a little crash, but thanks. Um, and I could actually, uh, I have made uh, actions for changing the theme, so I can do, hopefully work again. Hey, Pico. Ah, oh, Android, uh, what's going on with Android? Light over. Yeah, no, it's not a bit too late for iOS. Because, of course, I'm not, uh, why is crashing on Android? I'm actually really sad about it. <laughs> uh, whatever. Um, what I'm doing, uh, you said that you, you, you could uh, notice that I said, uh, hey, Pico, hey, Pico is my, is my hot word, because the, I, I actually integrated with Pico Voice. And the, it was uh, an easy hot word that I could, that I could uh, integrate with. And then I have some basic uh, commands. You can see uh, on the, oh yes, I have an Android on the left and iOS on, on the right if you didn't understand. And I have a dark light 12, uh, 24, uh, dark and light for the theme and 12 and 24 for the um, hour format. I cannot, unfortunately, uh, demo the uh, 12 or 24 because it's uh, 12 and it's going to be 12 also on a 24 format, so yeah. And you can see that I, I ended the phrase with over. This is for iOS. Android doesn't need that. If anyone here uh, has the answer, because I don't have that many experience with iOS, Android actually can detect the end of the speech recognition really well. It detects a silence and it ends. On iOS, you have to uh, either do a uh, click or do some kind of uh, end word. So this is why I, I had said over. And this is also why, hey, Pico. You can see here uh, on the Android side, on the uh, blue one, I don't have the followed by over because on Android you don't need that. So, yeah, I don't know what, they <laughs> what happened there. Uh, let's try something. I'm going to start again. And like here on iOS, I'm going to put like this to show you the Siri integration because I have done some Siri integration too. Hey, Pico. Shortcut over. So you can see right here what I <clears throat> what I did. I did the um, the shortcut uh, command to do uh, to launch this uh, this screen, which is actually a system screen, and um, it allows the users to uh, record themselves in order to, to perform some action on your app. So I don't I, I can I can do. Uh, can you please set the theme to dark? Whatever. You can, as a user, yes, done. As a user, you can record yourself uh, to do some kind of action. And then where it is really nice, I can kill the app. Where it is really nice is that once you do that, of course, when you do all the coding, you can uh, launch Siri and say, set theme to dark. 
I don't know if it's going to work because it's not exactly like this. Of course, it's not going to. Oh, I don't have internet. That's why. I was connected just before. What's going on? Sorry about that. Uh, oh, yes. And can I show you my lock screen? What is really cool, too, is that when you integrate, uh, I don't think you can see that well, but there is a serious suggesting, suggestion on my uh, lock screen right there to set the team to dark. I'm going to show you uh, after how it works. Oh, no. I want to connect. Hmm. <coughs> Okay, let's, yes, I am in a, I don't have internet. Just last minute changes, sorry, I'm going to to a hotspot. Since I am still kind of okay on time. <laughs> this, oh. Now you all know my password. It's fine. Okay. And I didn't put it. Yes, I really like myself. <laughs> OK. Please don't, don't join my network. <laughs> uh, connected. Uh, set theme to dark, yes. Set theme to dark. Cool. So you see, it's going to open the app. It takes a little time. OK. And uh, it opened the app, and it performed an action. So really nice, yes. <laughs> and if I can, uh, is this the Android project? Yes. As I said, App Actions, it's still on developer preview, but it works. I have to show you also my screen. It works, but it works through a simulation tool. So what's going to happen when I run here, it's going to simulate an interaction with the Google Assistant. So believe me, this is just as if I was using the Google Assistant. Uh, let me just do like this so you can see it. So hopefully it's going to work. Yeah, just once, whatever. Okay, so you saw there it launched the Google Assistant for a little bit and it's going to change, so yes. And it's setting to dark team from App Actions. Oh, and uh, on, C on Siri 2, it said the setting from dark team to um, Siri. So really nice. And uh, all of that was done uh, by simply using method channel. So let's see how actually, oh, this is, was a video in just in case it didn't work, but it worked. <laughs> the, um, the most common use case was only uh, the user opens an app by clicking on the icon. The app starts listening, so it was listening for the hot word, hey Pico. Hot word was detected. When the hot word was detected, I created a meta channel called uh, hot word detected, which stopped, the, of, of course, the hot word detection and started uh, the speech to text. So the speech to text was actually a Flutter plugin where the user could uh, express themselves, uh, himself uh, or herself. And then I uh, say, say dark, light, 12, 14, uh, 24, sorry. And then uh, on the flutter, of the, the business logic of the app was really uh, easy. It was only changing the color or changing the format of the hour. And I, I only had to do on the flutter side a set state with this new kind of data. And then when this was done, I had another method channel called uh, SDT uh, speech to text ended to stop the speech to text and to uh, st start the hot word detection again. Listen for hot word, hot word detected, and so on. So this was the basic use case. Uh, for Siri, uh, the one thing that I showed you, uh, for either Siri or Google Assistant, it's kind of similar here. Uh, a Siri shortcut to do some kind of actions too. Uh, an app action to a link again to an Android side and then a method channel to go back to the Flutter side. And you see that uh, it worked pretty well. 
And for specifically iOS, there were some kind of uh, additional method channels that I did. Uh, the first one that you see on the top is uh, every time that I had some kind of uh, activity by the user, by voice or by uh, interacting with the interface, I have, uh, I have this method channel called a dark theme set. It, this could be, of course, more general, like um, light theme set or uh, a conf a configuration set to register a user activity. This is basically uh, me telling the system, telling iOS that the user is doing that, so the the system itself can suggest um, the the Siri shortcut to the user. This is what I I don't know it, if it's still on my on my lock, on my lock screen. Sorry, this is what we saw. This here, right here, uh, the series suggestion. This is thanks to the uh, user activity that I have registered um, uh, on the um, on the uh, iOS uh, side. And then, of course, you saw the uh, add to add to uh, add to series shortcut. So uh, when the user said a shortcut, I send a method channel back to the uh, iOS side, which actually only pretty easily. Uh, to telling them to uh, telling the iOS side to open the uh, add shortcut view controller. So wrapping up. Um, so this is the famous diagram, most important diagram of the uh, presentation. And as you could notice, I have not integrated all of the blocks on the demonstration that I've shown you. For each use case, you have to think about what makes sense and what uh, you can uh, do with it. And you're not obliged, of course, you're not, it's not, it is not mandatory to use all of the blocks. And uh, I, I want to show you some, some examples of other things that you could do. Um, it's really interesting to use a Siri shortcut or the system voice actions, even though the system, oh, yes, yeah, the system voice actions, you can open the app, so it's, it's fine. When the app is closed, so whenever you are uh, or whatever on, on the system, you can, through Siri shortcut or voice action, uh, open the app and start listening on, on your app uh, with something like speech-to-text plugin from Flutter. Then you can do some kind of uh, machine learning and natural language understanding using a solution like SNPs, business logic, and then for the TTS, text-to-speech to give back the answer to the user. And uh, you saw Pico Voice, the one that I did. Uh, the downside of it is that I actually have to open the app first in order to uh, start listening, but maybe for your use case, it, it comp it's completely fine. Then I use some uh, speech the speech-to-text plugin, for example. I use the Lex, which is actually the NLP, the machine learning algorithm for Alexa, uh, which uh, exists for uh, either uh, for both uh, iOS and Android. Do some business logic, and maybe for this use case, it doesn't make sense to give back uh, a text, um, sorry, an audio um, answer back to the user. So you can give only a visual answer, a text, uh, some color change, or something like that. Uh, the top, the top example right here is the example of wh where you don't use uh, any kind of machine learning. Maybe some only keyword detection works fine for you. It's uh, it's fine to do that. The one on the uh, middle, it's even more simple. It's only interacting with the voice actions and series shortcut, doing some kind of, um, because what happens is that you can also give parameters when you launch those, uh, with those, especially with series shortcuts, with those uh, features, sorry, especially with series shortcuts. And then you can go directly to your app and do whatever you want and then give back a visual answer to your, to your user. And then on the other side, you can maybe uh, only do uh, the, the natural languaging part, natural language part, sorry. And you can allow your users, of course, to, to, to type on your app. This is maybe <laughs> a really good um, example for a search, uh, an advanced search feature that you can do on your app. You can have a search feature where you allow the user to uh, just say whatever they want, and through your uh, natural NLP or NLU part, you're going to detect what the parameters are, and then you're going to have some kind of business logic and do some navigation and some action on your app. And of course, you can also uh, uh, say delegate everything to Google Assistant through App Actions, or uh, to Siri to uh, the Intents extension, but it's fine. 
And then some final thoughts really quickly. Just think about your use case. Uh, voice, especially with the voice uh, platforms such as Google Assistant and Alexa has been really trendy. And a lot of businesses say, okay, we have this mobile app, we have this site, what is next? Okay, we have to have something that runs on Google Assistant and Siri. What's been going on? Does we have be having a lot of really bad experiences because people are not thinking about, um, well, the, the, the design of their apps. And especially, not every app and not every use case inside an app should exist on voice. The most uh, simple ones is for, of course, if, if your app can be ha handling some kind of uh, hands-free action is great. So, of course, for car, for cooking and something like that. And as I said, uh, it's really nice to have some kind of natural search feature. So this is really uh, a good starters for anyone. And also think about what your users, uh, where your users are, so, uh, are, sorry, and what they are currently using. Uh, as I said, maybe they don't use, uh, I don't know, your, your target user doesn't use uh, voice assistance at all. So maybe focus on the mobile side, uh, on a mobile app, sorry. And uh, this was only about uh, technical solutions, about how you integrate with the plugins and how to communicate themselves, how to, uh, all of the blocks that you need to integrate. This is 100% technical. Again, you should spend a lot, a lot of time and effort thinking about the experience, thinking about how the, we interact with this kind of uh, technologies. This is a new way of interacting with technology. We don't know yet what, what are the best practices and how we should, we can really engage and we can really leverage these platforms. So spend a lot of time thinking about that and doing what we call VUI, VUX, voice user interface and voice user experience. And that's it for me. Thank you very much. 42. And uh, the code. Oh, I lost Anna. And the, uh, the code for the, the project is available on my, on my GitHub if you want, if you'd like. And I don't know if we take questions or, at all. No? <laughs> or you can uh, ask. No? No? No orange people is giving me any answer. <laughs> oh, yes? Sorry, uh, yes, I don't know if I have a microphone or something. I submit it. Yes, I, I did it when I, when I did the project. I was like, yes, as I said, I, I wanted something simple. But the thing is, the, 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 the contest was about design. And I did everything but the design. And I was like, I'm not going to submit it. I think, oh, maybe they'll think it was cool. So I submit it and I got my certificate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So dialogue flow allows you to basically either send a textual representation of your speech or the uh, recorded voice directly, right? Dialogue flow takes uh, in input text. Uh, only text. Because I remember it was possible to send the uh, WAV files there. Uh, which, which API did you use? V1 or V2? Yes, and if you want, I think so. They, you could put an input uh, as an audio file. I think V2 doesn't do anymore. It was back in the days, yeah. Maybe, yeah. Is there any like root uh, signal process in terms of Flutter right now? Because on the audio side, it's still a bit immature, and you have all the tools to record and send it elsewhere. Have you tackled this problem and made it in some way? For the audio part, for the speech. The plugins were great because the thing is, is that, yes, I, I thought a little bit about that, not that much, so sorry if, if I'm not clear, but on Android, on iOS, those kind of uh, APIs, they have been out for several years and they work really great. I think that wrapping them on a plugin is the best choice and using a plugin that, that the, the plugins that exist, the, the, they're, they're good. But maybe we could, uh, go, you, you, you talk about like going on a lower level, like doing yeah, audio processing. Like yes. Yes. You, uh, I, I don't know of any work that has been done on that area. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know if anyone here on the room knows about that. I have uh, only checked the plugins that are using the first party APIs, the iOS and Android APIs. Maybe it exists, but I don't know about it. Thanks. And I see it's 45 right now, so, oh, but it's a uh, lunchtime round now, right?
but whatever, you can, uh, I'll be around if you want to talk with me. I'll be uh, open to discussions if you want to discuss later. Thanks. Thank you.